Before I begin my email, I want to tell you all that I'm not looking for any sort of fame or recognition by sharing this. Whether or not you want to believe me is solely up to you, but I know the truth, and this happened to me. I'm just simply here to share an experience I had back in 2016 when I went on the deep web that involved the cult. I remember it like it was just yesterday. I was on a scary stories binge and listening to a bunch of different narrators retelling people's experiences from the deep web. I reached a point where I couldn't contain my curiosity, so I decided to learn how to reach the deep web. I'll save you all the filler so I don't make the submission too long, but I got on and immediately got to researching a few links I had found. First it was a website about buying different products. It listed a bunch of prices as well as the sorts of services that they offered. I soon grew bored and went to a video sharing website. The videos themselves were really low quality. In comparison, they were like 144p, similar to what you might find on YouTube. The ones that piqued my interest were ones titled, Join Us. It consisted of a series of what I like to best describe as promos that seek to recruit people for some strange cult I'd never heard of. I actually tried looking them up on the regular surface web, but I couldn't find any articles or posts. I'd give you the name, but I don't want to risk the creepy fox getting any sort of strange messages from them. I highly doubt it, but you can never be too safe. Anyway, at the end of each video was an email that you can message them at. Yes, Dumb me actually decided to give them a message and ask if this truly was a cult or some sort of elaborate video series which was made by a bunch of bored college students. To my surprise, I get an automated email almost instantly, advising me I would soon be contacted with a recruiter. I waited and about 15 minutes later, I got a response. They tell me about the process of joining their cult including the information I would need to reply back with in order to be part of this cult. Now let's face it, I wasn't really going to give them my personal information. So to mess with them, I made up some random information and sent them that, telling them to have a nice day. I never received a response back. Fast forward a few nights later, and I was having trouble falling asleep. I blamed it on the date I had a few hours ago that saw me drinking some pretty strong espresso alongside with my girlfriend. Well, I want to say it was around 2 or 3 in the morning and my cell phone started to ring. Silly me had forgot to put it on silent. Not thinking of checking the caller ID, I answer it in my typical grumpy voice, only to be met with heavy breathing. I respond back with, Hello, who is this? Look, if you're not going to say anything, then don't call me again. They hung up. Whatever, I thought it was a wrong number. Five minutes later, I'm awoken from my struggling slumber to another phone call. Now I'm starting to get angry. I responded with some not-so-kind words, only to be met with music playing over the phone. Now I'm not talking about the greatest hits. This music was played backwards, and it sounded really creepy, like some sort of weird nursery rhyme. Ten seconds of this playing, I once again said hello, only to be met with a voice. It sounded as if it was coming from one of those voice filters. That wasn't very nice of you sending me some false information. We were genuinely hoping that you would take an offer from us and join our cult. Would you still like to join? I freaked out. I instantly hung up and blocked the number, checking my doors and windows making sure that they were locked. Not sure why I did that. It's not like the person who called showed up to my house, but I guess it was just my natural instinct. Safe to say I got no sleep and instead I went over to my girlfriend's house, where I had to explain over the next 10 minutes why I suddenly showed up to her place freaked out. She was just as scared as myself, but we tried to write it off as some sort of weird coincidence and a prank. Fast forward to when I later returned to my house, I saw that there was a missed call on my apartment house phone. Yes, I was still one of those who had a landline. 
It's because it came packed with my phone and cable service. Already forgetting the creepy call from earlier in the morning, I play the message, expecting to hear some sort of telemarketer. Instead, it's the deep voice from earlier, and it's asking me why I was playing so hard to get. I lost it. I went to the police station and had them ask my phone provider if they could do some sort of reverse phone search. Unfortunately, they weren't able to trace the call. Here's the strange part. Almost as soon as this began, it ended up stopping. I no longer received any further communication from this cult, nor did I ever get an email back. I still have the email in case anyone is interested in seeing it. I can even send anyone a screenshot if you want proof. Edit. I have no clue how they got my number, although I have some theories. I hadn't realized it until recently, but when you send emails using an email, it does display your name. For some reason, I thought it only displayed your email address. I guess that was how they looked me up. I mean, it's not a far stretch considering how easy it is for people to find out more information about you. Before I begin, I want to preface with the following statement. In no way, shape, or form do I gain anything from making this story up. This is based off true events that I experienced with fellow law enforcement park rangers who are also willing to back up my story. More than anything, I'm writing this story in to hopefully hear from some of you who might recognize this group or have more information. If you do, I'll look at the comments section and I'll provide you with any more details or updates. Anyway, let me begin. Back in the early 2000s, I used to work in law enforcement, slash, was a park ranger that patrolled and worked in state parks in southern Alaska. During my almost 30-year career, I witnessed many heart-racing moments, including one where I had a close encounter with some bears who were this close to tearing me to shreds. But perhaps it's not so much what scares Mother Nature can provide you with, but more so, people and their ever-longing goals to chill you to the bone. Well, wouldn't you know, the Alaskan wilderness isn't home to just animal encounters. I forget exactly what year it was, but it was definitely during the springtime, so we're talking about middle of April, early May, when temperatures were comfortable 50 degrees on average. Anyway, I was on patrol with another park ranger after sunset, and as we drove around checking in on the campers scattered around the woods, we came into contact with one group in particular who called us over. They were talking about how earlier in the daytime they saw some strange individuals in all black clothing and robes carrying torches and rifles. If these individuals, according to these backpackers, were some sort of hunters, it definitely sounded as if they weren't dressed for the part. But forget hunting clothing. This area was off limits to hunting, which meant we could give them a huge fine, if not, a trip to jail for violating park rules. We thanked them for the information and then got on our radios to advise other park rangers within the vicinity of the strange sighting. No one had seen them, which made it our mission to locate these people and figure out exactly what they were up to. Fast forward about 30 minutes of searching, and two park rangers have joined our search. We eventually come across a restricted part of the woods that has a fence surrounding it. What we noticed was part of the fence had been cut, just enough for someone, or in this case, some ones, to make their way in. We once again call it in to our park ranger station before the four of us make our way in on foot. Now, before continuing, I should mention that we were armed, with pistols at least. Might not seem like the best protection, but something was better than nothing. After no more than five to seven minutes of walking and searching, we could see a small light coming through some of the bushes in the distance. As we got closer, we were able to see some smoke, which we associated with a campfire, we would get further confirmation when we reach a campsite. Let's just say, it was really creepy. 
there was a giant pentagram sprayed on the ground with candles surrounding its circumference. We also saw a bunch of strange looking dolls, knives, and a bunch of beer bottles. While I tried to get a signal to call it in, we started to hear the sound of tree branches breaking and footsteps approaching from the distance. We each took out our pistols and form a defensive position. When about ten robed individuals pop out of nowhere, at least five of them were armed with rifles and a few others had some large knives. My partner instinctively asked who they were, but they remained silent. Ten to fifteen seconds of this awkward stare down, we hear someone tell the strangers to stand down before another robed individual reveals himself. This one was dressed in a red robe, unlike the others who were dressed in all black. He also had a skull mask on. We were guessing that he must have been the leader of the group. Anyway, he proceeds to inform us that they had been camping out here as part of a demonic cult group, his words not mine, and they didn't want to be disrupted which is why they came all the way out here. But surprisingly, he was pretty calm and talked in a way as if he had practiced this sort of response. He tells us that they had no clue the area was off limits and said they were willing to comply with the rules as well as clean up after themselves. They even presented the proper documentation for their weaponry. So thus far it seemed to all check out, apart from them just being a bunch of weirdos. Anyway, we still wrote up a citation after escorting them back to their vehicles. Fast forward a couple of days later, and I did some more research into their group with the information that they had provided me. It turned out that they were part of some weird cult who would go out every month to do their strange rituals using dolls. It's been years since I last saw them, and it's only up to a month ago I tried doing more research, but I haven't been able to find anything as I don't remember their name, there's not really much in form of proof I can provide you all other than my fellow park rangers who are willing to back me up. But like I mentioned at the beginning, if you have any more information or this sounds familiar to you, leave a comment so I can give you more details. I'd really like to get to the bottom of this after so many years of questions. Hey everyone. I hope you're enjoying this episode so far. If you haven't already done so, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it so you can be notified of any and all future scary stories narration videos coming here to the Creepy Fox YouTube channel. I'm sure you're going to enjoy your stay. Now, let's continue on with these scary stories. Two months ago, I was returning from work, tired and exhausted after being scolded at by my boss for something that I didn't do, you just gotta love the office desk jobs. Thankfully, I have my wonderful dachshund to go and spend time with. She's only a year old, but she's the love of my life. Seriously, just being around her for a minute automatically cancels out any of the bad energy I arrive with. Anyway, once there, I went ahead and paid my friend who was dog-sitting and then I went to go and make my dog some food. By the way, her name is Bailey. Bailey, jumping for joy, licking her chops, instantly chows down the meal I made for her, licking the plate for every last piece. As a reward, I gave her some of her favorite barbecue flavored snacks. Now, you might be wondering, what does any of this have to do with a graveyard, a cemetery, or a cult? And where's your scary experience? I'll get to that in a minute. You see, I just so happen to live across the street from a cemetery. It did take a while to get used to when I first moved in, but in a way it was a blessing in disguise. Not only was the house cheap, but the neighborhood is really quiet too. I guess everyone preferred it to be that way. Anyway, I went ahead and showered as I got ready for bed. The time was around 10pm, and I laid in bed reading an e-book. Out of nowhere, Bailey gets up from her bed and starts whining. I knew what she wanted. She needed to go and pee. The lazy me then puts some slippers on and a coat and heads to the front door. Unfortunately, I didn't get a good grasp on her leash, which meant that as soon as she sees the front lawn, 
she books it. Now, I don't know if it's just Bailey, but any other dog owners have the issue with your dog not coming back to you when you call their name. It's sort of an on and off struggle with her. Half the time she'll return and listen to me. Other times, she'll head to the neighbor's yard and play dumb until you manage to corner her. Not really an issue, but it's more of an annoyance. Well, the good thing was she never runs across the street. That is, of course, until this night. Yep, she just so happens to make her way over to the cemetery, and it's at this point I see the source of her sudden aggressiveness. A cat, a familiar one, however, who was notorious for leaving its droppings all over my backyard, as well as causing a huge mess. Speaking of a mess, I now had to deal with getting Bailey, who had made her way into the cemetery through one of the many small openings of the fence. Unfortunately, it's too tight of a squeeze for me to make it through, which meant I had to climb and jump on over. The best thing to do would have been to get the security guard who patrols the cemetery, but I was in sort of a rush. In nothing but pajamas, a coat, and slippers, I managed to make my way over, falling on my butt for good measure. Bailey, where are you? I called to her as her barking grew more and more distant. Ugh, why was it that my dog had to go and chase the dumb neighborhood cat? I spent the next five minutes calling her name to no avail, all the while making sure I didn't step on any gravestones. The last thing I wanted was to be haunted for life for doing that, but I digress. I eventually found her sniffing around one of the trees where she finally decided to pee there. There you are, Bailey. Come here, girl, I said with a sigh of relief. Unfortunately, my evening was about to get even worse. Once I grabbed Bailey, I heard what sounded like the deep voice of a woman. I thought it was just my imagination, but this would be debunked when from behind one of the large tombstones steps out an older homeless-looking woman. She began to question why I had been disturbing them, to which I apologized. She wasn't having it, though. She started to curse me out while calling for her other subordinates and cult members. That's the best way to describe it. And I then start to back up. And it's at this moment I got a better angle of what was behind the large tombstone. There were some candles along with a knife and dolls surrounded by what looks to be like a makeshift pentagram on cardboard. Also sitting there in a circle were three other people, their faces being covered by their hoodies and sweaters. Bailey started to whine as one of them grabs the knife and starts to approach me. I booked it. All the while, Bailey is just looking up at me like, what's going on, human? Unfortunately, I wasn't sure I would have enough time to make it over the fence. Thus, I opted ahead in a different direction. One that could lead me over to a security guard. It didn't take too long until I stumbled into one who scolded me for trespassing after hours. I'm sorry, my dog ran in here, but that's not the issue. Are you aware of the people deeper in the cemetery? He looked at me as if I was crazy, but after insisting they had knives, he radioed for backup. No more than ten minutes later, a couple of police officers arrived and went to go and investigate. I found out later that they were arrested for trespassing, being under the influence, as well as being in possession of a firearm, as well as being part of a cult that I had never heard of. That part scared me the most though, because all I saw was just the knife and not the gun. But anyway, since that evening, I've never encountered them or seen them around again. In Pennsylvania, right near the border into Delaware, there is a narrow, eerie place with deformed trees, closed off paths, and lots of legends. It is formerly known as Devil's Road. The main attraction is a place called Satansville, which encompasses the whole of dark twists, isolated roads, and unsettling encounters. It was written about in the book Weird Pennsylvania, which highlights the creepy places of the state. According to many rumors, there is a cult house hidden in the woods surrounding the road, and any trespassers on the road, especially those who stop, 
will be chased out with a black or white SUV or truck. For years I have read about the place and heard many spine chilling stories until I couldn't stop thinking about seeing it for myself. My friend Matt and I spent almost every Friday night at the mall together as teenagers do. As expected it can get pretty boring pretty fast especially with no money to actually have a motive to shop around for anything other than disappointment. Visiting Satansville, without telling our parents, became another weekly tradition of sorts after he told me about his experience a month before our first visit. He had told me that when he visited with his guy friends, his phone service completely cut out, leaving them without Google Maps in a potentially dangerous, unclear area that was already scarily mapped. Soon after, he told me a black truck came off a dirt road and followed closely behind them until they found the main road. It wasn't much, but it was enough for me to be hooked. Not too much happened on our first few trips. We would see other cars rarely, as it's a hidden road that is no longer marked due to excessive theft of the street sign. Occasionally, the cars would be black in color and we would get a rush of adrenaline. It was fun, but not exactly terrifying. Until, of course, one night, we finished up at the mall around 6pm, and we left with enough time to circle around once or twice with daylight, and the remainder of the time in the dark. It was about a 40 minute drive to Satansville from the mall, and I was tingling with excitement. According to the legends, cars that visit frequently are more likely to have experiences at this place, and this would be our third time visiting in the last few weeks. Now, instead of Matt and I going alone this time, we brought our friend Lola, who was very outgoing and would likely have a sense of humor in a situation that we'd be too scared to continue in normally. We drove down the highway and finally made the first turn leading to a seclusion, Matt and I had pinpointed several areas where we thought the cult house might be at, but stopping on the road is illegal, so we'd never have a real chance to explore. At least, that's the logical reason I gave in lieu of us being major cowards. The ambience immediately changed as we entered Satansville, and the cool night air fled in through the cracked windows. In the first few turns, other people aren't entirely a rare sight a few trucks pulling out of driveways, the like. However, the turn onto Devil's Road never loses its wow factor. The trees on both sides of the narrow road lean away from the forest aggressively, not just a tilt, but completely bending in the trunk away from things we could only imagine. We were approaching the first major bend in the road, and a car was coming up towards us. It was a tight squeeze, nearly impossible, for two opposing vehicles to pass, but the presence of a car alone was enough to cause a twinge in my gut. Matt was focused on squeezing by while turning, and Lola was too busy cracking jokes to see what I saw, but I've never forgotten the face since. I looked over to the white jeep to my left, and the window was incredibly tinted, but half down. Looking back at me, straight into my eyes, like he'd been looking at me long before I looked at him, was a young man, maybe about 25 years old, with long blonde hair, a deathly pale face, and horribly thin fingers on the steering wheel. He was not at all focused on driving as his eyes pierced mine, and this is the worst part. His neck was turned completely towards me, while the rest of his body was completely straightforward. This may not sound creepy, but it was not normal to bend that way. He said something, but I couldn't hear him over Lola and Matt laughing at her antics. I couldn't break his gaze. I was stuck staring at him until finally Matt passed the bend and he was gone. I kept checking the rear view windows, terrified with a feeling I'd never quite felt before. When I could no longer see the jeep, though it felt as though he could still see me, I quietly asked my friends if they had seen him. Neither of them had looked at him, nor felt anything unusual. I was pretty unsettled, yet excited to see what else would happen. 
and we turned off of Devil's Road but were still in Satansville, preparing to loop back around when we passed a little shack that always housed two black trucks. There were no signs of any other drivers, and we wanted to stir the pot a little bit. We stopped for a few moments and honked to the horn, flashed our blinkers, and then kept driving. We also blasted Old Town Road for some reason, because that was our peak of comedy at the time. We looped back around and were back on Devil's Road, when Matt stopped mid-sentence to adjust his mirror. In the darkening distance was a black truck. We giggled with nervous excitement and kept on driving. It was exciting, but it kept a reasonable distance and I think we all kind of assumed it was just a coincidence. That is, until we turned off of Devil's Road once more and saw that there were no trucks parked by the shack anymore. We lost the truck when we turned on the main road to circle back around again. We circled around two more times, nervous but skeptical, and not much happened other than a white SUV that kept blinking its headlights that was right on us. Not gonna lie, that freaked us out, and the return of one truck to the shack. This is where it gets really intense. On our fifth loop, we were all very tense. The aura had changed to heavy, and it was completely dark at this point. Things had started to feel more ominous, probably from slightly less passive actions taken towards us by whoever was there. We went down the bends, peering nervously into the woods. Some trees were marked with three sixes and upside down crosses, marks of other more ballsy teenagers, and there was a distant light in the woods, courtesy of God knows what. As we turned off of Devil's Road, but still in the heart of Satansville, headlights appeared behind us. It was impossible to tell what kind of car it was, as it was pitch black, and we had just turned the first major bend. Moments later, the truck appeared behind us, speeding. We were going about 25, and the truck must have floored it to catch up, and it drove uncomfortably close to us. I was the one to see it first. It was a black truck, windows tinted, and driver unknown. We drove on for a minute, freaking out and turning completely behind us like creepy jeep guy, but more normal. Soon, a second truck joined behind it at a fork in the road, and they revved their engines as if in communication. The truck sped up, nearly crashing into us, and we were forced to speed up. This continued through many intense twists and turns, where our speed reached up to 70 miles an hour at maximum. They flashed their lights and kept speeding up and getting closer. At this point, we were losing it. They were definitely either going to run us off the road or catch up to us and do who knows what. They had these weird red lights on top of their trucks and the light was reflecting off every window in our tiny Honda. Just above a small hill, the main road was visible and relief flooded us. We panicked again though when we realized that we would have to wait for traffic to slow down before we could turn and they would definitely catch up to us. With nothing else to do, we stopped and glanced behind us. The trucks were gone. We all expected a sudden ambush but made the turn onto the highway and started home talking about what the heck just happened. We came to the conclusion that the trucks had probably turned onto a dirt road only visible to those who know it's there, and that they were chasing us away from their activities, like the rumors say. What were they doing exactly? We have no idea, and we had no intention of finding out, as we hadn't been back since. I still can't get the face and presence of the man in the jeep out of my head, and this was over a year ago now. So creepy jeep guy and potential cult leaders, let's not meet ever again. Hey creepy fox, here's a scary experience from a soldier, that being myself. For this story, I will call myself Emily. I was 23 years old when this happened. Anyway, I'm deployed out in Europe, where I live on an army base. Now for privacy and security reasons, I can't tell you where exactly, but I can tell you I have been here since August of 2017. 
Anyway, I heard you were doing a video on military stories and experiences from soldiers. That was actually how I found your channel a couple of years back. Since then, I've been listening to your narrations and love the stories you tell. Keep up the great work. But okay with that, let me tell you a bit about myself. I'm an avid explorer and grew up camping with my older brothers in the Alabama wilderness. Being the only girl in the family, I grew up to be tough. That was why I enlisted so that I could test my bravery. Well, it was the end of December and we had some days off from training and the usual routines at the base. I figured as a way to get some time to myself, I would go camping out in the wilderness. Luckily for me, there is a large set of woods about 30 minutes from our base. This was actually a location that we did our training in, and I figured that this could be my getaway. Now, technically speaking, some of this area was closed off for military personnel, but there were some spots that were open for the public. Long story short, if you saw an area that said no trespassing and was fenced off, then you best listen. Now, I wasn't really interested in our military private grounds area, but more so the area that is open to the public, as it has this nice view on top of a small mountain range. It is a bit of a climb, but it's one that's well worth the adventure. So, since I had already spent the last week packing for my trip, I left bright and early the first day of my four-day break. With me, I had a large backpack which contained your basic survival materials. I made sure to also pack my trusty handgun with me in case of an emergency. Anyway, I arrive around 6 p.m. and I began the walk up into the woods. It would take me about an hour and a half to reach the place I needed to get to. As I was an hour into the walk, I ran into a couple of campers who had set up a small campsite. They were nice and ended up calling me over. After talking with them for a bit, I continued on my walk until I got to the halfway point. At this point, a light rain had started to fall and I ended up taking cover below a large tree. As I sat here waiting for the rain to stop, I began to hear the sounds of branches breaking around me. I suddenly peeked up as I focused on the sound figuring that it might be a small animal, so I ended up ignoring it. However, after two or so minutes, I then began to hear people speaking in German. Soon enough, two men who looked to be in their early 40s come into my sight. These guys looked interesting to say the least. Honestly, the best way to describe them would be like stumbling upon some strange cult people. They were both bald and had long unkept beards. They both wore large overalls and each had lanterns. They wore strange robes with weird cult symbols and had been chanting what sounded like some sort of strange religious phrases or language. Note that at this point it had started to get dark. They did spook me, but I had my gun with me just in case. Anywho, they ended up noticing me and began walking toward me. Since they spoke in German, I was able to talk to them as I learned it growing up. Basically, the conversation goes a little bit something like this. Aw, would you look at that? What's a beautiful young woman like yourself doing out here all alone? One of them said. I responded. Well, I'll tell you one thing I'm not doing. Being a little baby walking around with lanterns. What, are you afraid of the dark? I joked. Yeah, remember how I said I like to act really tough? This was one of those times I did just that. You think you're funny, huh? Do you know what we do to people like you? Oh, please, don't make me laugh. What are you going to do? Well, there's two of us and one of you out here in the deep woods. No one will hear you scream when we sacrifice you to Lucifer. Do as we say and no serious harm will come to you. Both of them then take out knives and began walking closer. Sure, I was being brave, but even that sight was a bit scary for me. Needless to say, I took out my handgun and they suddenly froze. They did a complete 180, apologizing for what they were doing and saying that they were joking. Both of them then take off running into the woods. Now I thought that that was going to be the end of my encounter, but it was just the beginning. At that point I considered heading back, but I had already made it this far. Besides, I was armed. 
and what would they do with the knives against my gun. Moving on, after 20 more minutes of waiting in the rain, and it now started to lighten up, figuring that my adrenaline had also calmed down, I continue with no further issues. At this point, it's around 8.30 p.m., and I settle next to a cliffside that overlooks the woods. I'll tell you the sight was absolutely stunning. The moonlight shining above and the stars twinkling. What better else could you want? Even so, while I sat here, I began pondering more about the two strange cult guys I encountered earlier. First off, I'd never seen them. Second, I encountered them in an area that was rarely traversed. This was mainly due to the fact that the trail was hidden and was full of shrubbery and other trees too. Really, unless you knew about it, you would have missed it. Pretty much the middle of nowhere. But I digress. Fast forward about two hours later around 10.30pm. There I was below the entrance of a small cave. I had a campfire and laid in the little sleeping bed I brought with me as I was reading a book. Eventually, my eyes got heavy and I was starting to drift off to sleep. I slept for maybe 20 minutes when I was suddenly awoken by what sounds like rocks and gravel being moved. I instantly shot up from my sleep and scanned the immediate area with my eyes and my gun. Nothing. I guess my paranoia was getting to me. Besides, no way those two men from earlier would return after what I was packing. I lay back to sleep where eventually I passed out from exhaustion. At around 4am, nature was calling and I had to get up to use the restroom. I made my way over to a set of trees where I do my thing. And just as I'm about to get up and leave, I could see two figures walking up to my campsite. They were tall and appeared to look like the men I'd seen earlier. They were at a distance, mind you. Anyway, this time, they looked like they had axes, and I kid you not. What happens next? I couldn't believe. From where I was hiding, I could see as they each took turns swinging at my little bed I had. Since I had my blankets and pillows lying in a certain way, they must have thought that I was in there. After a minute, they yelled out in frustration and trashed my campsite. After that, they walk off into the dark and I no longer see them. Yeah, you can imagine how scared I was at that point. These two really came back for me and from the looks of it, were waiting until I fell asleep to try and kill me. Sadly, there wasn't much I could save since most of it was burned. In short summary, I made the hour and a half walk back in 45 minutes since I no longer had any of my supplies to slow me down. Luckily, my jeep had remained untouched and I made it back to base. Safe to say my fellow soldiers have told me never to go camping out there alone. It turns out that a couple of months ago some people had gone missing while camping. I'm not too sure if those two from that night had anything to do with it. But I do know one thing. To those creeps who I know were part of some weird cult. I never want to see you again because if you try attacking me you're going to get shot. I know a lot of people are going to think that my story is fake, but I swear it's not. I've got my best friend as a witness. This happened a few years ago when I was about 13 years old. I'm 5 foot 7 and about 125 pounds, so I'm pretty small, but I usually have pepper spray and a pocket knife on me. I am embarrassed to say though, in the excitement of exploration with my best friends, I forgot my pepper spray and my knife. I love to explore and travel even, or especially in places I'm not allowed. So when I moved in, of course, one of the first places I explored was the train tracks. So I had my best friend come over one day to explore the neighborhood with me, and we decided the train tracks was a perfect place to explore. We were walking for an hour or two, but it was still light outside. And we had just passed a small neighborhood street so we felt safe. But when I turned around to throw a stick, I saw five hooded figures following us from about 200 feet. I tried to pretend I didn't see them and told my best friend calmly. But we decided to look at them straight on and see what they would do. Once we looked at them, they stopped. So did my friend and I. We stared at each other for a few seconds but it felt like hours. Finally, they made their move. 
Three of them went left, and two of them went to the right. We heard the sound of loud and fast footsteps, so we finally snapped out of our trance and ran as fast as we could. We were both in cross country, and we were being held together by adrenaline, so we could run faster than we ever had before. Luckily, because I explored on those same tracks alone a few days ago, I knew if we ran half a mile more, we would be on a bridge above another small neighborhood. We somehow made it. No clue if we were still being followed or not, but out of fear, we jumped 10 feet down and kept running deep into the neighborhood until we finally saw other people. Then we slowly walked home, shaking and exhausted. Looking back now, I regret not telling my parents, but I was scared they wouldn't let me explore alone anymore. But I didn't go on those train tracks again. Hello everyone, thank you for listening to the Creepy Fox Podcast. If this is the first time you've joined us, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it. That way you'll be notified of any and all future uploads coming here to the Creepy Fox. Also, if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like rating and a comment down below telling me what you all thought. And make sure to pick up some Creepy Fox merchandise if you'd like. That's available right below the video player. Now I'd like to go ahead and give a very special thank you to all our channel members. Thank you to Robbie, Bo, Spunky the Nutcase, Rice and Beans, Linz, Maribel, Medu Saltil, Dread Archive, Sean, Jen, Corey, and Sylvia. Thank you, of course, to all the regular viewers who constantly tune in and listen to the videos and share them with family and friends. It really does go a long way to help out the Creepy Fox family grow. Speaking of that, if you'd like to go ahead and share your own story for a future episode, then make sure to send it in using the user submissions email on screen. That's tcfnarrations at gmail.com. As you saw today, we did go ahead and feature some stories from Reddit. I have discussed this in the past, and because I want to go ahead and give you guys more videos without you having to wait forever for new uploads, I'll be going ahead and including stories from Reddit, along with the scary stories that subscribers send. Thank you for understanding. So, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. I'll catch you all on the next episode. Until then, take care, and have yourself an amazing day.